Hello, Parts Project here, and today I'm going to be going over the setup for this scenes, punch in effect kind of uh, hack bug that uh, is very useful, that I find very useful, so I felt compelled to make videos about it. And I, uh, I did a setup video for it like a couple years ago, but it's pretty long, and uh, maybe I'm a little bit more articulate these days the setup for it uh, basically maybe just quickly to show you what we're we're setting up uh, I'm sequencing the dig attack externally keep in mind so listen to this Here's my little pattern and when I am in uh, this record mode and I hold down the trig it does different different things this one this is that pitched up all pitched down a little bit of a low distortion stuff here and then here's total silence whatever right okay so that's the result we're going for so if you're interested this is how to actually set it up so we'll go to this other uh, I've copied the pattern just to start from from scratch basically we're now using the the dig attack sequencer completely for this trick. We're not using it at all for sequencing the notes. It's coming externally. Uh, the first thing I do is go to every single track, go into record mode, like uh, grid, grid record, uh, the mode where you add the steps, and I I add fill trigs to everything. This is how I do it. Apparently, you can do it with uh, trigless trigs, but uh, Copy, paste, 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 copy the page, boom, 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 and then we'll do that for all the tracks. We'll paste it, boom, 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 and copy, paste, 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 all the tracks. Thank you for your patience, but uh, I've gotten pretty quick with it, so maybe I'm just showing off here, or not. Okay. Done, done, done. So that's all done. So, I mean, relatively painless. Um, so now that they're all fill trigs, let's just save, temp save the, the whole thing. So let's just listen to our kick and start with this process. So here's our kick. Now, going into the, the onto our sequencer with all the trigs that have been laid down on it. Now that track one has been activated and our kick's being, um, uh, well, we're focused on the kick track, we can hold down, let's just hold down number one, and we'll go in and do a little, like, lock of a high pass. Now you'll notice that it's affecting all the hits. So it's acting like as a completely, for everything, not just for one single trig, because the trigs don't exist. Uh, they're not coming from the sequencer, they're coming from another sequencer. So. Now they're behaving weirdly and differently, and I don't know why, but this is how. This is the how. So let's do a bunch of locks. Let's just lock a bunch of different effects to this step. We've got the high pass, put some delay, some sample rate reduction. That's fine for now. Now, the cool part is, well, this is all very cool, but when we let it go, it instantly goes back. So now we have this button we can just hold down, and it gives us our temporary effect there and we let it go and there it is so excellent the uh it's even better though the good news is that you can include all the tracks to be affected all at the same time with all of their individual locks all on the same button so let's just go ahead and do that right now uh, it uh we'll open up our clap so here's our clap sound and we'll activate on track five so we'll just uh, select track five so now we're on track five with track five's fill tricks and so now we'll hold down the exact same physical button physical trig on the dig attack and you'll notice that even though we're we've selected track five if we hold down this button and we haven't put any locks on track five yet it's activating the locks that we put on the kick 
So now, but now that we are on track five, we can lock some stuff onto track five and include track five now in this punch in effect. I think pitching it down is enough just to show, you know, what we're doing here. So let it go. Now we have this scene that includes the kick and track five. Well, just to be certain, let this, to, you know, to make sure it's clear, we'll open up track six. Got some kind of metallic percussion thing. And so we're activated on track six. We open up our sequencer, hold down number one button. You'll notice that the other two tracks are affected. And now we can lock stuff to track six. What should we do? Let's loop track six. Let's loop it. Open up the decay. Right? That's cool. And now when we let it go, they all go back to normal. Okay. So that's how to um, put all of those effects onto a single button and they all get affected by that pressing that one uh, trick. No matter what track you are on, um, as long as you're in the... the uh, is it... Uh, it's grid record mode, right? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> but when you press the record button and you open up your sequencer. When you're, when you're in this mode, it doesn't matter what track you're on. You could be on any track. This track... 8 hasn't had any locks put on for track 8 yet, but it's still going to affect uh, all, the other, uh, all the other locks that we've already done. We're on track 8, we hold this same one, it's going to affect them all. In fact, even, uh, let's just temp save. Yeah, so for if on track eight, if we just delete, if there's no trigs on it, even if there's no, yeah, if there's nothing, you know, we just hold down number one. And it puts, it does it. But then, of course, it adds a trig, right? And then it's going to be sequence actually like triggering that sound with the Digitex thing, which um, I could get into it maybe in another video because actually I start rambling a lot when I explain it. But uh, basically, it's like either using the Digitex completely for its sequencer or doing this trick and using an external sequencer. I, I have not found any plausible way or any um, practical way to be, you know, combining the two. So it's kind of an either-or situation, I would, I would say. That's my opinion. And, um, wow, I, I feel like that really just basically covers it. Um, so hopefully this video helps that with the setup. A few, a few little points, disclaimers, things to watch out for maybe. When you've got your tr trigs all set up and everything's going and you're jamming, if you press a trig too quickly, it's going to erase it. You don't lose the scene for all the tracks you just lose what you locked for that one particular track so that's the good news there that's why i temp save all the time and then i can just reload if i accidentally like whoops i drag my hand across it and i just reload or i whoops i pressed it too fast just reload and there it pops back in or i could copy this page and paste it across all four pages so i have the same 16 scenes and just pasted them copied so if i lose some i can just and I can't reload, I just go to the next page. Another thing was that, for reasons unbeknownst to me, some of the parameters didn't want to stay locked when I powered the unit down and brought and opened it back up. So when I, yeah, I boot back up and go into the project, and scenes that I had locked certain stuff for didn't stay. They were only particular um parameters they weren't just like a bunch of them it was like maybe only the decay and it was different parameters depending on what project i was on and it didn't happen all the time and it never it used to never happen and this is was a recent thing and i don't think it has anything to do with an update i i think it was working fine at the last update and it's so it could be something else well it's, it's I'm pretty sure it's just some something else but i don't know what it is so i can't really offer any um you know, any uh, insight onto w how to avoid that or not. Um, so that's just something to watch out for. Anything else to watch out for <clears throat> or to keep in mind? You, 
can only do okay somebody asked if you could run the midi out of the dig attack back into the midi in of the dig attack and and uh and and have it work not with a regular midi cable you need this special cable that as far as i know only uh retro kits like well the retro kits is the only people that i can think of that have made a, a midi cable that does that where you can do that so anyway you just look up retro kits and we'll put the the link in the description and you can find them they've got all these crazy midi solutions they're awesome i've got one of their things i've got the uh uh the the rk6 which is which is really good but yeah go get that cable if you want to do it just stand alone some other things to mention is it works with um, most of the modern electron boxes digitech mark one and two digitone uh, probably for number two, although I haven't tested it. Sing, uh, Syntact, the Analog 4 Mark 1 and 2, the Rhythm Mark 1 and 2. I've had reports. I've tested the Rhythm myself, and um, I've had reports of the other ones working as well. It can work with any sequencer. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be I've used it with the model samples and other, such, and other sequencers. I had one person tell me that they couldn't get it to work sending MIDI over USB from their DAW, but um, we're not sure exactly, like that could be a number of reasons why that wasn't working. And uh, go in your directions with it, right? You might be getting all kinds of ideas just seeing this that I never, I wouldn't have even thought of because I've got my own brain and my own way of working. But as far as just getting it set up, I, uh, I hopefully this video helps to get started with this so then then you can like take it and run with it so uh all that being said uh thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye